I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, so I'm working on repairing another one of the Autoplex 390s among the whole bunch I had back there. There's one right there. This is one of the ones that had a bad power supply, so I changed out the power supply for this one here. It's a Best Tech ATX 312Z. This is the uh, unit that I uh, repaired the blown out trace on. Been in my storage bin for <laughs> close to a decade. But, uh, it's working fine, powering this machine just fine. Um, I did try to run it with an ATX 25012Z and um, I think the 12, I think the 250 12Z would run okay. It's just the 312Z offers a bit more 12 volt power that this thing needs. So that being said, since we have an Oxbox 390 with no OS on it, I figured why not let's give Windows 11 a try on this machine. I know some of you were probably interested to see the Octoplex 390 run Windows 11, so. Let's go look at the uh, system specs on this machine. It has an Intel Core i5 2400 CPU clocked at 3.1 gigahertz. It's a quad core processor. This machine has 4 gigs of RAM which is the minimum required for Windows 11. It's DDR3. We have a 250 gig hard disk drive. No, we don't have an SSD in this one. Uh, we have just the factory 250 gig Western Digital Caviar Blue hard drive. So we'll see how that handles it. But um, So yeah, let's go ahead and give this a try. So let's go ahead and grab our Windows 11 installer. This machine's already set up to boot off the of UAFI, so that's 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 nice and handy. Since uh, of course you know, the Windows 11 is it can it, the Windows 11 can uh, actually boot off of either MBR or UAFI. It's funny to think that, um, of course, with Microsoft's Elite Class minimum requirements Windows 11, that would theoretically rule out all systems that do not boot with UAFI. But yet, somehow, amazingly, the OS can still boot with MBR. But anyways, we got the flash drive inserted. I'm going to go ahead and close up the system. This we don't really need to have. Don't really need to have it open at the moment. Most likely, we'll open it back up to uh, clean it out. And when I put these machines out for sale, which they will be getting Windows 10, when I put them up for sale. I'm going to offer an upgrade option to a uh, to a 512 gigabyte SSD because I think the SSD would really help, and of course SSDs are a lot cheaper nowadays. So get a little more space and a bit more bit more performance. But just for this video, we're going to run it on the stock configuration. Now, I don't know how much RAM this thing had when it was stock, but um, it still has a stock processor and factory hard disk drive. That being said, let's go ahead and give it a spin. We're going to skip this part. I believe this machine actually has a Windows 10 Pro digital license, so we're going to choose Windows 11 Pro. This flash drive was indeed set up with uh, Rufus and does have the TPM and processor checks turned off. Interesting. There's actually a. Uh... That's really odd. So apparently there was something on the hard drive. I don't really know what's going on there, but anyways, 
and go ahead and just wipe it. Just go ahead and just hit delete on all these. And of course this one here is the flash drive itself. That way we have a full clean slate here. Now before one of you guys ask me why I don't just click next right away and when I do the new and apply, it's because I want to make sure that Windows setup properly places the system reserve partition which has the uh, basically the bootloader. Sometimes it will place it on the wrong drive. I mean I, that's happened a couple of times. It typically happens in systems that have multiple hard drives or if you are installing a different copy of Windows on a machine that already has like Windows 10 or Windows 8 for example. So we're going to select next and let it install. Okay so I've got Windows 11 installed. Just need to run through the uh, out of box setup and let's see how things run on this machine. Okay, so we're going to run through all the options here. Here we're still waiting on the taskbar to load. Okay, so it looks like we actually have a graphics driver fresh out of box, which wouldn't surprise me since this is a little bit older machine. So I'm going to hook this up to the uh, internet so that way I can download any necessary drivers. And I'm also going to go ahead and apply a few things. So it appears we actually have sound on this. Although it's just a pretty pretty wimpy uh, built-in speaker. So let's go ahead and fetch the PC health check. And while that's going, go into settings and fix the date and time. Because we know Microsoft thinks that all computers are on the west coast of the United States in Pacific time. So it looks like we are taking a driver update for the uh, graphics. You know, instead of, instead of asking the important questions like what is the current date and time and what time zone you're in, setup nowadays is more concerned about uh, your advertising ID and Cortana when one is 10. But the stupid stuff like that instead of the stuff that actually really matters. Let's change everything to dark mode. You 
because I much prefer dark mode over light mode. That's just me. So we can see that transparency is working properly. Let's finish installing this. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, run the uh, PC health check. So that way we can see how this computer running Windows 11 does not meet the Microsoft Elite Class Minimum System requirements for Windows 11. It's funny, introducing Windows 11. Yeah, we're running Windows 11. Ah, the PC does not. The PC must support Secure Boot. TPM 2.0 must be supported and enabled. The processor isn't currently supported. However, the memory, the system disk, and the processor has two or more cores. I mean, everything else here, these three items here, which would typically be the minimum requirements, are all met, but all this stuff here isn't met. Which, as I've said in previous videos like this, um, Come 2025, Microsoft's going to have a decision to make. Are they going to support Windows 10 for additional time? Or are they going to finally give in and relax requirements for Windows 11? Because, I mean, if they don't, we're going to have a lot of Windows 10 computers out there that would just simply be running without any security updates. Because, you know, with these uh, Microsoft Elite Class Minimum requirements for Windows 11, a lot of computers are simply just going to be stuck on Windows 10 and come 2025 a lot of these computers are going to still be in use I mean it makes no sense to throw away a good machine, a perfectly working machine like this Optiplex 390 I mean it's a bit dated but it's still pretty well capable for basic tasks <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and look in task manager and you can see <clears throat> the standing memory usage is 46%. Now I'll go and do a restart because we've actually uh, up in some stuff. But this looks to be yet another example of a computer that does not meet the Microsoft Elite Class minimum requirements for Windows 11. Running Windows 11 beautifully. Despite this, uh, I still can't exactly recommend installing Windows 11 on a computer that you're selling. And the reason is, one of the reasons is because when a new Windows 11 platform update comes out, computers running Windows 11 that don't meet the minimum requirements will probably be locked onto the existing Windows 11 version because Windows update will probably say, this computer does not, does not meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11, therefore you can't install the new Windows 11. <laughs> and I've heard that Microsoft is going to be putting watermarks and stuff on machines that don't meet the Microsoft Elite Class minimum requirements. But we shall see when the next build of Windows 11 comes out. I'll be doing some testing with that. So the thing is, this machine is taking its time with uh, loading up, and apparently, see, the thing is with Windows 11, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they make a solid state drive a requirement. Not so much that you won't be able to install the OS, but they'll make it a, a recommend, recommendation that you have a solid state drive. And of course, Microsoft is pushing OEMs to now include SSDs and for good reason with Windows 11 is such a resource hog. So in a future video what I may do 
is I may um, do a computer, not exactly this machine here, but an older system. If I want to say the Windows Vista era, I'll beef it up a little bit with some decent memory. What I'll do is I'll install Windows 11 on it and do some basic speed tests. Um, show how long it takes to boot up. Do a standing uh, idle memory test. Show how, much, show how much RAM is being used just at idle. And then do the same with Windows Vista. Just to show that the uh, OS that many people may still have engraved in their heads as the resource hog and the slow and, um, and bloated windows. Um, I mean, you, you may you, you may be in for a surprise just how bloated windows has become since Windows Vista. As a matter of fact, I can go ahead and put a link up right up here showing you um, two similarly specced netbooks. One running Windows 10 with the Atom N450 CPU and the other with the Atom N270 CPU running Windows Vista and you would just, you'd be amazed as how much slower Windows 10 is compared to Vista and even Windows 10 over time has gotten much slower and I've made a couple of videos talking about Windows 10 uh, performance from 1507 to 21H2 and also comparing Windows 11 against Windows 10. So I'll go ahead and link the video here for that. There'll be two videos actually. So yeah guys, I'm going to have to cut it kind of short here but uh, I've done so many of these videos I mean it's pretty much know the drill. You can see yeah, the Octoplex 390. This system from 2012 is running Windows 11 beautifully. A bit slow because of the hard drive, but if we were to swap out the hard drive for a solid state drive, this thing would run very snappy, I guarantee it. Because, I mean, you look here, our CPU usage is relatively low. I mean, it's not doing much there. And the standing RAM usage, by the way, um, is now 35-36% which is not terrible this machine has the minimal recommended memory requirement for uh, Windows 11 4 gigabytes so there you have it and you can see this is a quad core processor it's a Core i5-2400 CPU. All of the Octoplex 390 systems I have have this particular processor. So yeah, that's another example of an older system running Windows 11 just fine. So anyways, we're going to shut this down. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the computer channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.